Good evening. We'll open um, closed session for Rikers City Council, April fifth, twenty twenty-three at five thirty. Is there? Nope. Okay. I will close. All right. I'll call to order uh, our City Council meeting for April fifth, twenty twenty-three. Please uh, join me in the, the pledge of allegiance. <laughs> I pledge to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. And just for the record, we have no reportable action on our closed session meeting we had prior to the public meeting. And um, before we get started, I just want to state some news here within our staff and some of the changes we've been making and moving forward or people deciding is we did receive a letter of resignation from our city of attorney. And I'm just going to read in part um, some of his letter that he wrote. Um, he wrote that I, uh, this is from Don Hinian. I've had the distinct honor of serving the city council of the city of Arica for over 10 years, serving the city and its various city councils has been a true pleasure. Arica is a, a unique place where the public gives comments <clears throat> that are helpful and constructive, and the council is truly motivated to guide their actions for the best results to their constituents. The city is thriving and the city staff works hard to improve the city with hard work and effort to obtaining grants to improve the city. The city has a new city manager and assistant city manager that work hard to see the city and the council's needs are met. And with closing, an effort to practice law at a pace that also gives me the luxury enjoying some semblance of normalcy I must reluctantly lay down my sword for the city and resign my position as city attorney and city prosecutor. So we want to thank Mr. Hinion for his 10 years of service with the city of Arica and we wish him well. He'll be um, transitioning with us for the next 30 days as we um, move on to a new law firm. And, um, but our city will run smoothly and we'll have no, um, head cups with the transition on to a new city attorney or city firm. So again, our city attorney did submit his re resignation on March 27, 2023. All right. And now is the time we have for special presentations or our announcements. This time slot is for informational presentations, appointments, or awards to be presented by the city council or to the by the city council or to the city council. And this is item A. This is Fund Your Small Business, a special event. This is Quentin Gaddy, Program Director, Business Development, Siskiyou Economic Development. We'll share information about a special event Wednesday, April 19th, 2023. 10 a.m. at the Holiday Inn in Warica. Fund Your Small Business, hosted by Cisco Economic Development and co-hosted by the Women's Business Center at JEDI. The event will feature a panel of several lenders, the U.S. Small Business Administration, the California Office of Small Business Advocate, with focus towards first-time business owners or those looking to scale their business for the first time. Good evening, Quentin. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, as I said, my name is Quentin Gaddy. Just a little news update. As of April 1st, 2023, I am now director of the Shasta Cascade Small Business Development Center, which will include Shasta, Trinity, and Siskiyou counties. So basically, um, Siskiyou SBDC has been a high performer in the state, uh, uh, pound for pound, even though we're one of the smallest centers in the state, we put up really good numbers. And so the state requested us to 
uh, take ownership of Shasta and Trinity counties as well. So we're going to be combining all three centers into one center. Um, so we'll maintain our offices in Wairika. Uh, we'll also have an office in Reading, but my advisor pool has now tripled. So I went from a team of five advisors to 15 advisors. And so this will be a big benefit for our local businesses. Uh, so if I run into, you know, all the time, especially during tax season, I have a managerial accountant as an advisor and she would be booked up. Now I have three people who can work with businesses on bookkeeping and advising, things like that. So it's, it was a good move. Uh, this event awesome. in particular um, is on April 19th. We're hosting it at the Holiday Inn. And we are co-hosting it with the Women's Business Center uh, at JEDI. A lot of times we get questions like, can I work with JEDI? Can I work with you guys as well? Yes, we like to collaborate and work together. Um, this event is really going to be geared towards small business owners, people who are interested in starting a business. Uh, new business starts have sort of hit record highs since, since COVID. A lot of people who wanted to become their own boss, own their own business. And so we're gearing at, you know, what does it actually take in order to get things financed? Um, how to set people up straight. You know, we run into a lot of times where people can think of debt or think of uh, business loans as, as, as a real scary thing, um, as, as something they don't want to have on their books. Uh, I call it like the Dave Ramsey effect. Um, you know, I had a business who bought her business outright in cash. And the challenge with that is she didn't leave enough funds on hand for working capital for operating expenses. And so down the road, when she ran into some cash flow issues, she ran out of money. And that's the number one thing that kills small businesses. And so what we do is we like to sit down with businesses and look at their financials and look at, okay, this is what you can actually afford in terms of debt. Or if we look at restructuring, you know, existing obligations or things like that and see how that frees up cash flow and what they can actually afford to do. And oftentimes it's a lot more than people actually know. They just don't have the, the plan put in place to be able to get there. And so this event is going to have folks from some different local lenders we have Tri-Counties Bank, Mechanics Bank, Banner Bank, um, but we also have non-bank lenders, including CDC Small Business and Superior California Economic Development in Reading, who will be participating. We'll have folks from the State Office of Small Business Advocate and the U.S. Small Business Administration as well. So we'll have local partners, federal partners, state partners, basically telling businesses, these are the resources that we have. Now, typically the SBDC has been known uh, as like the best kept secret we're trying to we're trying to break that uh, you know sort of reputation. We don't want people to not know about us. We want people to know that if they want any assistance on on starting their business, on growing their business, uh, setting up payroll for the first time, going into bank, getting that first loan, setting up a line of credit because you've got a seasonal business, whatever it may be, we have resources where we can help with them. And so this event's really going to be focused on getting people to 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 know how to connect with those resources. Um, and with that, I can answer any questions about the event. Okay, I will open up to the public for any questions for Mr. Gaddy with the event. Okay, I uh, will go to city council. Council members have any questions for Mr. Gaddy? Okay, comment. <clears throat> So um, I just want to congratulate you on your expansion. That must be really, really exciting. And I know that it will be really good for our communities. So congratulations. It, thank you. It, it's, it's giving us a better seat at the table in terms of working with the state, which is really the, the, the big move there. Um, so we appreciate that. Um, and if I can just say, you know, if there aren't any questions, I highly encourage if you know anyone who's got a small business or is looking to start, you know, please send them my way. Give them my cell phone. Um, happy to take calls at any any time of the day. So, All right. uh, Councilman Davis, do you have a question? You do one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, work with folks, businesses, and individuals. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, I, I and and the other thing too uh, to stress on that when we do work one-on-one -on -one with businesses, it is a hundred percent confidential. Um, so we don't share any personal information or any financial information of any businesses. A lot of times. Businesses don't want to open up their books. Uh, they might not want to show you what's going on under the hood. And so that's something I can stress is that we work with businesses in confidence. Um, everything is, you know, kept secret. It's, it's bulletproof like a, like a lawyer's agreement. Um, and we work in the best interest of the business. I'm not going to sit in here and, you know, tell you all the things that you're doing wrong. We're going to figure out, okay, how can we maybe fix some things moving forward? Thank you, Mr. Davis. Councilman Davis. 
Councilor Pro Tem McCoy. Thank you, Quentin. All thank right. You. Thank you. And thank you for everything you guys do. And congratulations on the new venture. That's awesome. And um, we thank you for coming. And we will definitely get the word out. Um, so yeah. It's very exciting, very important. So anybody listening or anybody in our audience who's thinking about small business, April 19th. Thank right. you. Appreciate thank, it. Thank you. Take care. And I forgot to mention at the beginning of the meeting, uh, the city clerk is that we note that uh, Councilman Keg is absent for the evening. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is uh, 7B. This is a Caltrans update on the Riker Rehab. This is Catherine Lowe, Caltrans project manager, will give us an update on the Riker Rehab project and all the construction that's been going on for a few months and that's going to continue for the next three years. <laughs> Just everybody knows it's going to be going on a while. <laughs> Thank you for the good evening. To give you an update. Um, so I am Catherine Lowe. Good evening, council members, come close. Uh, audience. Come I close. am joined <laughs> by um, uh, RE John Hinton and um, public information officer Mario. Who's <laughs> Um, so the first slide is our uh, Title VI. There's a lot of information there. I do have handouts um, I can provide. Thank you. So I'll just give you a minute there. Um, there is a phone number. I'm not sure you can you. quite see it, but it is on the handout. Great. And just and just sometimes it's really low so if you can speak right into that microphone real close and loud as you can i have a soft voice too and i get i appreciate the scolded reminder. as well thank you so much <laughs> for being quiet <laughs> so we'll go ahead to the next slide i must have mine out of order sorry so i uh, just wanted to go over the what season we're in so season one was last year we completed segment seven for one, there's one outstanding item in that, um, but that is um, on the east side of I-5 on Highway 3. We are in season two. We have quite a bit to do for season two. We have segments one, two, three, and five, and I don't expect you to know what that means. Um, we also have Clean California work, and then season three will be next year. It's our last year working on it. We have segment... Um, trouble seeing the bottom of the slides there four and six thank you those will be done next year as well as any remaining work for the clean california next slide so these are the uh the circle encompasses the segments that are going to be worked on this season so as you can see we have a small area on the north end of um, north main street where it turns into uh, 263, that's what we're calling segment five. The other portion of it um, is that South Main Street. Uh, the blue indicates where we're putting in concrete and the green indicates where we're putting in uh, pavement. So segment one, two, and three are all encompassed in that larger circle. The area that we're working in right now is segment one. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in detail, but I did want to give you a big picture view of what you can expect this summer. That's where we're going to be working. Next slide. I'm out of order here. Okay, so where we're at right now is segment one. And segment two is uh, going to be once segment one is completed. These have some major straight uh, staging constraints, as you're aware of, as you drive through this space. And it's not going to get better right away. So there is a lot more work to be done in that area. Um, what we're going to be doing is some roadway excavation. We are relocating some utilities or the utilities are relocating prior to us getting to the area. Uh, we are lowering the utilities as well and we are installing drainage. So if you drove the route today, you would have seen that they were delivering some of the um, bigger precast parts that are gonna be installed as part of the drainage. 
And so that's going to be installed um, this week. Next slide. Okay. So our long-term traffic impacts, those are going to be always one lane open in each direction. So what you're experiencing right now, South Main Street to Moonlit Oaks is segment one. And so the traffic is shifted to the west right now. And we're going to start pulling out that asphalt in that area tomorrow. So if you go to Quick Maps, you can see that um, we also have indicated there that there is one lane closed. The next one is going to be segment two. Yep, go ahead. Okay, so short term traffic impacts, those are where we actually have closures. So the first one is going to be the Moonlit Oaks and I 5 ramps onto Moonlit Oaks. Those ramps are going to have to be closed for a portion of time. So please anticipate that. We are bringing the concrete up the ramps a certain way. It is going to be rapid set concrete, so we will be able to get you on the road as soon as we possibly can. Um, the surface of that road is not going to be um, what the finish will be. We'll have to go back and grind, so there's going to be some lane management at that point. But we're trying to move through the, the closure as quickly as possible. Uh, the time, the dates, they already changed since I made this slide. So we were hoping middle of April, it's probably going to get pushed till um, later than that. But do anticipate that's the next big impact to our traffic that's going to happen. Uh, the next short term traffic impact is going to be the closure <laughs> at um, the intersection of South Main Street and Moonlit Oaks. We are going to have at least one lane through there, but it will be controlled traffic and it'll be about a week. Uh, the next one is Oberlin Dry Road is also going to have a complete closure. And that's going to be about two weeks maximum. Okay, next slide. So then on the other end, on the north end of Main Street, we also have some uh, staging constraints there. As you can see, we have no traffic control there at this point, but it will be happening at some point in this during the summer. And the, air, the work we're going to be doing in that area is curb and gutter and paving. And actually, I think that might actually happen in April, but I wasn't totally sure. So that's why I didn't put the, the date down. Next slide. So for 2024, uh, we circled those areas as well. That's where we'll be working. Uh, that's segment four and segment six. So at this time, is there any questions that we can address? All right, I will open up to public comment or questions at this time for Caltrans if they have any questions regarding our project, the project we have going on. We have going on. <laughs> I don't know if that's on or not, Don Marie. Um, the green is not concrete. That's it was going to be concrete, but then what happened is it basically a lot of utilities and it's not concrete. So you want to put concrete over the top of those old utilities. Six months, six years later, you're cutting through that concrete. So it's much easier to patch through the asphalt versus the concrete. So that's that's why we just put it on the top of the concrete. I just remember it being yep. concrete to begin with, and Come to the microphone, please. Come down to the microphone, please, Steve. Thank you. Not sure if this is a, maybe it's not fixable at this time, I guess, but uh, I'm a general contractor and I've never seen such poor drainage as what we have up there beyond uh, Black Bear, where they put all the new concrete, where we've been riding over it all winter long with the massive rain and water runoff we've had, and the puddles, and I went, whoa, the first time I rode up there, I went, Jesus, this is, this is not right. <coughs> it, there's puddles all over on the road. It's not running off anywhere. So we're not done with that section. 
Okay, so very good. And I'll have you come to, I'll, I'll finish those questions, then sit down, you come speak in the microphone so our audience can hear as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have people online that need to yeah, hear you so, as well. So that section is not actually completed. All we did was grind it good enough to get traffic on it for the winter. So what we'll do is, is eventually when we finish the other side of the roadway, we'll bring in what's called an inertial profilograph and they'll drive it and it, it reads the roadway and tells you where all the bumps are. And then they'll bring in a, a, bit, a grinder and they'll, they'll make it like that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Any other public comment or question? Okay. Come on down to the microphone, please. Yes, please. My name is Bob Dunham. I understand it's a uh, unavoidable part of the process, but uh, have people talked to anyone at Caltrans or the city about the uh, damage to the suspension on their vehicles when driving over the uh, incomplete areas with the big uh, dips and wows and how the asphalt settles sometimes and always going over those bumps? Has that been raised as a concern? Uh I don't know if it's been, I don't know if it's been, a, it hasn't been brought up to my attention from the city, but you can answer yeah, it, that question it, if you guys have received anything. It's actually been brought <laughs> up a lot. I mean, uh, the biggest, the biggest concern, you know, most of the public in general is, is smoothness of the roadway. You know, I always say they don't know whether we got our culverts straight or, or the compaction's good on the base rock, but, but everybody cares about the smoothness. So the, the biggest issue is we've had multiple projects come through. Some of them are actually city projects for the uh, water in the sewer. And we've got suburban propane comes through and they do the trenches. And most of that's just encroachment work for us as far as we issue a permit. We make sure that they follow the permit. Um, but all of it's temporary, you know, they're just trying to get by. Uh, like in uh, segment two, which would be from uh, say Black Bear down here to, to Oberlin. You know, there's some stuff in there that's that's pretty rough and so we get on them we go hey get out there you got to patch it they come back depending on what the weather is you know maybe it's snowing and they can't do it so we do the best we can to keep it smooth but but it's not perfect but we're, we're going to get it done and it's going to be a lot better so lots lots of comments on that yeah yep. <laughs> yeah all right thank you. thank you guys Okay, with no further uh, public comment, I, oh, where is your hand skip? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. um, all right, I will um, come down to city council for questions or comments. Council Davis, any questions or comments for Caltrans? Councilman Baker. Um, thank you, Mayor Middleton. Um, thank you for this update. Um, being new on the council, um, I get a lot of questions about what the heck is going on. And uh, I really don't know where to direct people. So how um, how do you inform the public of like the closures, the areas that you're working in? Um, tell me about that. Yeah, so you're always welcome to call me. Um, I'll make sure you have my information. Because it's changing so quickly, that is part of why we wanted to be sure we, we came today. Um, as you can see, I put down dates for the anticipated closures, ramp closures, that sort of thing, and then they already changed. So it's very difficult to put things um, out there well in advance. Um, but what I can do is continue to communicate with you, let you know as I know, um, and then things will change. So if you can um, give me some grace <laughs> on, <laughs> on getting you that information as soon as I know. Um, but yeah, the 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 big thing is that this is going to be um, here this summer, and it is going to progress as we as we expect. So um, we can't expect it to move as as we anticipate. But exactly when it's going to be at each location, I I I can't promise that I'll be able to answer that specific question. Yeah, and Mario Mario can give you some more information. As well. yeah. Like if we're going to close a ramp, we have to notify the public 10 days in advance. So I know sometimes the signs and the CMO message boards, they all kind of get to be a blur. But if we're going to close a ramp, you're going to see a sign that says the ramp will be closed on these dates. 
So that's that's an easy way. There's a couple of significant things that are going to come up that are going to impact the public. You know, um, at some point in time, we're going to close down the Moonlit Oaks right there in front of Black Bear. And it's going to be a 55 hour closure. We'll always maintain the traffic on Highway 3, but you won't be able to go across the fair lane. So when, when that occurs, we're going to advertise it. People are going to know it's coming. When we do Oberlin, it's going to be advertised. So there's always that. And then there's always uh, uh, Quick Maps. That's a, a Caltrans uh, site that will show you where those closures are at. It, we have to put them in. Um, basically, the contractor submits them to the Caltrans on Wednesday for the following week. So on Monday uh, of that week, it's published on our website, on the Quick Maps website, where that closure is going to be at uh, to the post mile, which sometimes it's hard to tell, but usually you can zoom in and kind of see where it's at. So those are those are the ways that, that we notify the public, uh, other than calling Catherine, who's who's going to call me, and, and then I'll call her back. So. Thank you. I was just going to say, I, I know everybody's not on Facebook, but we utilize Facebook a lot to uh, keep the public informed in a lot of our projects. So if you are on Facebook, um, look us up at Caltrans District Two. And, uh, and we'll, we post all major updates on there. Thank you. Council Baker for the question. Pro Tim McCoy, do you have any questions or comments? I wanted to thank uh, Jonathan and Mario and Catherine for being here tonight. And in, 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 according to what, um, Bob, according to what you said, one of the things that I've done is direct people, because I've gotten a lot of calls on it, and I've directed people to both the city manager and the public works, and then they tend to, they'll call up, because uh, it's you, most of the stuff that, I, that I've seen out there is not Caltrans, it's it's the pipelines, as, as, as um, Jonathan said, yeah, no, Jonathan, right. John, yeah, John. John. Yeah, it's most of the, the pipelines. And I think what they were doing, especially in the winter, was they were overfilling them and letting us drive over them. And I, you guys have done a tremendous amount of work in trying to get them to do it. And they're good people. I understand that. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm directing people just to call one of our two and then they can contact you because I see you guys usually at one of the local transportation commission meetings or this. So. And you've been very, you've been very helpful, especially about the north end of town when I've come to you with things. So I do want to thank you and encourage people to reach out to you. Thank you, Pro Tim McCoy. Thank you. Um, one thing, if I may suggest to uh, our city manager better is that um, maybe on our next newsletter, we can reference the Caltrans Facebook page and maybe the quick map um quickmaps.com website for caltrans for district two and maybe just put in there there's going to be some road closures coming up and here's some great places to look so if we can maybe put that in our newsletter yes all right thank you is that okay with the rest of the council that sound like a good idea yes all right <laughs> all right thank you guys so much we appreciate it and I get questions all the time and people complaining, but I tell them the end result's going to be great. So hang in there. I know it's going to, it's going to get, it's going to look great. It's going to make our town look good, look great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys. Safe travels. All right, public comment. Uh, public participation is welcome to invite at all city council meetings. This time is set aside for residents to address the city council on matters listed on the consent agenda, as well as other items not included on the regular agenda. If your comments concern an item noted on the regular agenda, please address the council when that item is open for public comment. The city requests that persons addressing the city council refrain from making personal, slanderous, profane, and disruptive remarks. Council members, when recognized by the mayor, may ask questions of the presenter, but no action may be taken by the city council during the public comment section of the meeting. Under the Brown Act, the city council is prohibited from 
discussing or taking take any action on any item not listed on the posted agenda. This time is set aside for residents to address the city council on matters listed on the consent agenda, as well as other items not included on the regular agenda. If your comments concern an item noted on the regular agenda, please address the council when that item is open for a public comment. Please speak into the microphone from the podium. The podium electronically adjusts up and down to accommodate the speaker. Please state your name for the record prior to providing your comments. Please address the council as a whole. If you have documents to present, please provide a minimum of seven copies. Please limit your remarks to five minutes. Public comment period is not intended to be a question and answer period or conversations with the council or staff. It's time to have any public comment. Uh, good evening, City Council. Good evening. I'm going to re <clears throat> have you refer to my. And please state your, na state your name for the record. My name is Glenn White, citizen of Wairika. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the City Council for giving direction <laughs> to the city staff to get Greenhorn Park cleaned up. Outstanding <sighs> job. I want to thank you all for doing that. I had an option to be out there while they were doing that cleanup. Uh, and everybody involved was very focused on ensuring that this doesn't happen again. Uh, we are out there on a daily basis uh, surveying all the trails. We are going to continue to make uh, comments and uh, identify any areas that we think need to be addressed immediately. So we don't have to spend that type of time and money in the future to clean up that uh, our beautiful park and it is a beautiful park. All right, on page one, uh, I just, you have the uh, Larger Creek Trail Development Project. It came to about $2 million. Uh, that was uh, completed about five and a half years ago. So five and a half years ago, we had a beautiful greenway. It was beautiful. Everybody could walk it, everybody could enjoy it. Uh, and in five and a half years, it's gone from that to where it is in a dilapidated state today. And by the way, part of the identification was that the city of Wairika would be the lead agency for the Greenway project uh, and supply staffing to ensure that the Greenway was maintained in an appropriate manner. Uh, page two identifies some of the things that we're going to do as far as daily patrolling along the trails, surveillance cameras, strict enforcement of greenway regulations, especially regarding transients, uh, safety suggestions for use of the greenway trails alone. Uh, page three identifies some of the areas that uh, were gonna be prohibited. Dogs, on, dogs off leashes, camping, fireworks and fires, disturbance of native vegetation, cultural sites, illegal drugs, smoking, littering, panhandling, and loitering in and about the area. A few of, of, uh, of these are being enforced from my observations on a tri-weekly walk. Page three outlines business profession code. And, and the reason I bring this up is because it outlines the theft of shopping carts. Uh, <clears throat> Mark Atwood, cleans shopping carts every week. He returns them, he goes around and picks them up all over the city of Wairika. Two weeks ago, he picked up 80, not eight, not 18, but 80 shopping carts that had been stolen off the properties of our businesses. And where do they end up? Let's turn the page. Why they end up in Wairika Creek. And one fishing hole, or one little hole where the fish uh, congregate, there were five shopping carts, and they're still there. The illegal camps underneath the uh, uh, Caltrans uh, bridge are still there. I was going to take a walk through there, but two, had two individuals out there yelling and screaming, dogs barking. I felt unsafe. So I turned around and went the other way. And if I feel unsafe, imagine what another citizen might feel. 
Oh, by the way, the, the, Green, uh, the Greenway Welcoming Center behind the museum is completely destroyed. The sculptures have been smashed. The benches have been uh, torn apart. There are five active camps back there with trash, et cetera, scattered everywhere and into our anadromous fisheries. Next page is uh, an active dump along Wairika Creek as an example. It's not one, it's not many, it's, there's many, many, many. I'm, I'm requesting that the city council consider agendizing uh, for action and discussion of possible action, the creation of an ad hoc committee for parks and greenway. Part of your Prop 84 grant stated that you would have partnerships. I can see nothing in any information anywhere where those partnerships are active. Let's get an ad hoc committee going so that we can save our parks and greenways. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. On, uh, on your minutes, number six and 10B, if you'd like to talk about that right now. Uh, I, I'm sorry, the minutes, I will, I will get to the minutes. Uh, actually, no, go ahead, right? Because we don't yeah. bring it back. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry? Go ahead. Okay, good. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I, I'm looking at your proposed, not not voted upon yet, minutes. Uh, it's under a public comment. It said Tad White, Mark Atwood, uh, Louise, and Jerry all had comments, but it doesn't really state what the comments were on. Usually, in the public comment section, if they're going to make comments in a, an agendized uh, item, we know that they're going to be talking about that. But the public comments, uh, random public comments sometimes don't have any kind of acknowledgement on what they spoke about. For example, mine might say Glenn White spoke on the illegal activities in the parks and greenways and supplied a handout. Uh, that would simplify things greatly and add to the transparency of your minutes by just having a single sentence. Uh, the other issue that came upon is that the those handouts, once they become, they've been given to the council, become uh, public record. And as such, they need to be able to be reviewed by the public. Twice now, I've gone in and requested to take a look at some of those documents. And twice I've been told that they had no idea what I was talking about. So for example, uh, Mark Atwood passed out some information on the Greenway on March 4th. Once he passed that out to you all, it became public record. There's no, there's no place that shows where we can review that. My uh, packet from last week or last meeting was also passed out and became part of public record. And there's no place that I could find anywhere, including coming to City Hall, where I could review those documents. They are public records. They fall within the Public Records Act. And so what you might be able to do, and I got this off of an old training, is that you might be able to just go ahead and put them on your website, and that might take care of the problem. Uh, so they can be reviewed on the website. It's pretty simple to do. It's not too necessarily too hard, and it would take care of a lot of issues where people are saying that, you know, it's not required. We know that, but it is best practice. It really is. Uh, if you post them on the website, they can serve to reduce the burden of in-person requests for inspection of those materials, as well as uh, make people comfortable being able to sit at their home uh, and drink a cup of coffee and review the documents. Simple fixes, some of the things you were talking about on Saturday while I was skiing with the grandchildren. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Any other public comment? Yes. Uh, Steve Bradford, 409 Evergreen. Yeah, I, I uh, commend 
this gentleman for bringing all that to your attention. It is a, a very serious problem. We all know the homeless thing is a serious problem, but uh, the, the lack of respect for our city, and this is really what my topic is about, is the uh, pride in, of our city. You know, and, and the kids that and the the the, the populist in, in general, you know, where is the pride and of ownership in our city, in our county? It's really hard to see. Um, I see some good things as far as what the city's doing in this public works, you know, in, in the park. I walk the park all the time. Um, I see some really wonderful things going on there. Uh, not yeah tammy is doing a great job i really want to thank you guys for putting her on the job and 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 being a part of the making wairika beautiful because <laughs> she's doing a great job and i think that's a real plus for bringing pride to the city and other people seeing that you know we're trying you're trying to do something we are trying to do something um but i think we got a lot of work to do and as far as the uh this guy came, came in here with this, uh, what is it called? The, they, they get money from you guys to develop business? Uh, yeah, the SBA, I believe. It used to be, I forget it. Yeah, the Small Business Development Council or whatever they're called. I think you give them $4,000 a year. I think you ought, is that true? Or you can't answer that? Um, I think they need to be held responsible for what that $4,000 is doing because I've been here for what 14, 15 years and I don't see any improvement in any kind of business and we're not going to see it lately here come, you know, in the next future, the next few years, days, few months, whatever, because of the economy and everything else. <clears throat> so it's a pipe dream what this guy's talking about, in my opinion. Real quick, I just want to support Councilman. Baker and, and Davis for their stand on the uh, housing issue that was brought up in the uh, I saw it in my in my uh, in the paper actually I saw it in the paper good job uh, where three of you voted for the grants and all this other thing you know for this new uh, housing that uh, the planning director is trying to implement and I spoke with her personally about that. Um, but you know, you all know I'm very, very much against grants. They just cause nothing but <clears throat> responsibility to that grant later on, and those grants continually to you know be you got to be responsible down the road to them, and you don't know where, what the responsibility might entail in the future because every administration changes everything, and all of a sudden you're head, held for something you can't be responsible for. So this country was not built on grants. It's built on hard work and, and morals, integrity, and tradition, and values, and that's where we have to go back to to the to the to the trust and the love and the, the appreciation that we've always had in this country. We're losing it. We we can start right here in Wairika and bring it back, and then we can let that mushroom on out. But it's up to the leaders to instill it, and the people look to you guys for leadership. That's my two cents worth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comment? Come on down to the microphone. Podium. <laughs> hey, one second, a minute. Uh, my name is Bob Dunham, and uh, I know a few of you. I've met a few of you on different occasions. Uh, I do want to mention that uh, I fully agree with the previous gentleman's statement about the job that uh, Tammy O'Sullivan is doing for the city. Uh, I meant to commend her on that the next time I ran into her at the mailbox. She lives on the same street I do. Uh, she's doing a great job. Um, the reason I'm here this evening is just a little reminder uh, that squeaky wheel again about the property on Bluebird um, 1022 and I think 1026 are the numbers. Um, 
Nothing has been done to ameliorate the issue of uh, basically a toxic site sitting there uh, open to the public. And the public has recently discovered it as a dump site. Uh, my neighbors have mentioned to me they've noticed uh, uh, new trash bags there where people back in and just dump it off. And I, I walked by it the other day and said, yeah, there it is. And uh, I asked another neighbor about it and he said, well, he's the only thing he's seen is some couches being dumped. <laughs> and on my walk a couple of days ago, I noticed there were about four gallon size containers uh, with used motor oil that someone had taken and set there. Uh, you know, just back in far enough to get it off the street and lay it there. So uh, I think with the weather turning nicer as it is, the word's going to get around that that's an available dump site. And uh, minus uh, any chain link fencing that had been mentioned previously or anything like that to discourage people from going in there, they're going to continue to do this, I think, and just make the problem worse. I just want to be that little uh, squeaky wheel to try and get a little grease going and <laughs> uh, as the uh, the judge said at the uh, at the hearing that was here and uh, declaring it a nuisance site, you know the, the wheels of justice move slowly, but they grind real fine. Um, it's not been a lot of grinding or moving done lately. I just want to be a reminder of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dedham. And I do believe I don't want to get into too many details. But we did receive receivership of that property. It's been a long process, correct, Mr. Ledbetter? No, we're still in the we're process. Still in the process. Yeah. So it's still in the court system, but I think it's getting there. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's it's get it's getting there. I know it's been slow, but I know our staff has been working very hard and uh, our attorney. So, yeah. So bear with us. I know it's a nuisance and. Um, I, I know some of your neighbors and have talked to them and um, they share their frustrations. So I know it's hard for me to sit here and say, hang in there, but I think, th I think they're getting, I think they're hopefully getting there. Yeah, okay. No, there are some steps being taken. The wheel's going a little faster, but not too fast. <laughs> it's going, it's going. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Any other public comment? Okay, I'll close public comment and item number 10 is oh, Mr. Ledbetter. Yeah, if I if you don't mind, I just want to respond oh. to a couple of the public comments. Oh, sure. <clears throat> just as a Sorry. reminder. Um, yeah, Saturday, actually, Mr. White had pointed out that was what we were attempting to uh, resolve was a public review binder. And so that is an item that still we'll work on at the next code of conduct policy, <clears throat> hopefully meeting to resolve this issue because it has been brought to the attention of staff by multiple members of the public, including uh, Mr. White here this evening. And then uh, Mr. White, if you don't mind on the documentation that you bring in, if you can address that to the city clerk that sits back there, and then that way we can uh, basically have that information for the public review binder that we're attempting to set, set up. And then ultimately um, we're an action minute uh, group here. And so I think in the past, it's been difficult for some city councils, maybe it'll be different for this one, but ultimately our minutes should only actually um, address action and they shouldn't even address who gave public comment because there is no action taken. But in the past, we've had some city council members that wanted to kind of have a line between complete minutes and action minutes. And so ultimately that's something we can also discuss in the code of conduct policy, how we want to address that in the future. And then ultimately with the Bluebird property, we certainly have not forgotten about you. Um, it was mentioned by our mayor at the start of this meeting that um, our city attorney is resigning. And so ultimately he did start the receivership process, but um, I am currently in discussions with a um, code enforcement law firm that does this all around the state of California. And so we hope to have a multitude of different law firms on um, contract in order to meet the capacity of the city, which is essentially 
having more than one individual person work on a multitude of different projects at, at one time. So we do certainly hope to see more traction on that. Uh, we have not forgotten about you. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ledbetter. All right. So now I will move on to um, item number 10, consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and non-controversial and will be enacted by one motion unless any member of the council wishes to remove an item for discussion. A, approval ratification of payments issued from March 13th, 2023 through March 26th, 2023. B, approval of minutes of the regular meeting held March 21st, 2023. C, approval of minutes of the special meeting held March 25th, 2023. D, continuation of urgency ordinance number 864, fireworks. E, way full text reading of all ordinances on the agenda. Ordinances shall be introduced and adopted by title only. Before I use the recommend city council action, the motion to adopt the consent agenda of the city council of the city of Irica as presented. What are the wishes of the council? Councilman McCoy, or Pro Tem McCoy. Uh, this is Councilman McCoy, so moved. I have a motion by Pro Tem McCoy. I'll second that motion. And a second from Councilman Baker. I will go for a roll call. Councilman Davis. Aye. Councilman Baker. Aye. Pro Tem McCoy. Aye. And I, Mayor Middleton. All right. Motion passes four to zero. <laughs> New business, this is for item 11, city manager. This is the agenda title for this special event known as the Kiwanis Club Easter Egg Hunt. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Wairika City Council. This is Jason Ledbetter, the city manager. So uh, every year, to my knowledge, uh, for many, many years, uh, decades now, there's been an Easter egg hunt uh, at the Minor Street Park. And so ultimately, we have the Kiwanis Club Easter Egg Hunt scheduled for Saturday, April 8th. The city council budgets $500 to give to this event, which was um, budgeted by the previous council and already given to the organizers. Um, this event is scheduled to take place April 8th, and there is also going to be a craft fair at the park as well. So the hours of the event are from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And ultimately, we are just looking for uh, tonight that the council adopt resolution 2023-17, approving vendors for the crab show and other requests associated with the special event being held by the Kiwanis Club to be known as the Kiwanis Club Easter Egg Hunt. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ledbetter. I will um, open up to public for um, any comment regarding item number 11 on the agenda for the Qantas Club Easter egg hunt at the park this Saturday. Okay, no public comment. I will go to city council for any public comment or questions, or not public comment, but any comment or questions for the city council. Is this a normal thing for the council to do to approve this? I believe it's been in the past several years. Yes. As long in this as I can case, remember. Because of the money issue? It's uh, actually every, uh, yes, every event along these lines uh, comes to the city council ultimately is part of the policy that we've had in the past. So, all right. That is, I was thinking of kind of like micromanagement. I didn't think it was quite necessary, but if we're granting funds, I can see why you would bring it this way. Yeah, and so you could reserve the park for like a private party, and ultimately we wouldn't bring that, you know, for a child's party. But then we have a Rotary Reserves Greenhorn Park for a large cycling event, and ultimately we always bring anything that may have any level of disruption in our city we let the city council make the determination on whether or not they want to grant the right for the event to take place. Thank you, uh, Councilman Davis. Uh, any further questions, comments, council? All right. Okay, so the... Um, 
Recommended City Council action is the motion to adopt resolution 2023-17 approving vendors and other requests associated with a special event being held by the Kiwanis Club to be known as the Kiwanis Club Easter Egg Hunt. What are the wishes of the council? Councilman Baker? I'll make the motion. I have a motion, uh, Councilman Baker. I'll second. And I have a second from Councilman Davis. I'll go for roll call. Councilman Davis? Aye. Councilman Baker? Aye. Pro Tim McCoy? Aye. And I, Mayor Middleton. Okay, 11B, this is going to be the police chief. This is the agenda title, Department of Justice Community Hiring Program Grant Application. The City of Arica Police Department is applying for a competitive Department of Justice Community Hiring Program grant funding for officers to hire or rehire additional career law enforcement officers in an effort to increase their community policing capacity and crime prevention efforts. The city is requesting funding for two officers, a total grant award of $750,000 for three years, expendable over a five-year period taken into account, the recruitment lead time. The city will be responsible for a grant match of at least $250,000 over the same period for the two officers. Good evening, Chief Gilman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members. So yeah, I'm, this is Chief Gilman. I'm up here looking at a grant that just came available for us. It's got a short deadline. I believe it's due in about a month. So that's what we're bringing up now. So we're trying to get it all put together. And it's for community-oriented policing, which is, you know, more, gives us two officers to do more community-oriented type of jobs. This isn't for like just straight patrol. It's a $750,000 grant is what we're asking for. They have a 25% requirement, at least, of $250,000. <clears> this is over a five-year period for a three-year grant. It brings in the two departments. This comes from the COPS program, which is pretty typical throughout the United States. This is a nationwide program right now. COPS funding funds a lot of different programs throughout the United States. Um, it's a very good program. It's, this is designed for something to help with a lot of comments we've heard in the, from the public tonight, you know, dealing with uh, community organ type stuff. The goals of the program is to provide funding directly to law enforcement agencies to hire or to rehire additional career law enforcement officers in an effort to increase their community policing capacity and crime prevention efforts. The anticipated outcomes of this program is to help analyze and assess problems implementation, implementation and changes in personnel and agency management in support of community policing. This increases our capacity to, for the agency to engage in the community policing activities. You hear the word community policing a lot, but it has a lot to do with like the PAL program, some of what Edna does, uh, someone to patrol parks, someone to work neighborhoods. That's what this program is designed for and that's what that sentence means. Um, the funding must be used uh, to re reorientate the mission and activities of law enforcement. Additional officers positions should be added to the LEO's budget above the positions we already have. So we can't supplant positions we already have for additional positions. Um, the COPS office is committed to advancing work that promotes civil rights, racial equity, increases access to justice, supports crime victims, individuals impacted by justice system, strengthening community. This, like uh, the snow closures in the winter, we get a lot of road closures anywhere from 10 to 20 times in the, the middle months of the winter. We got a lot of stranded motorists in town. Uh, there's a lot of different features that we can put to community oriented policing. Also community groups, Mr. White was talking about, you know, ad hoc committees. Well, this gives a chance for uh, neighborhood watch, different types of community groups, things like that. It's a really good program. It, it's hard to come up and you know ask for money, but this is quite a bit of money they're offering to us. They offer it to every agency in the United States. And it's something that I think we really need. It helps with the vision I have of making the police department even better. Uh, we get a lot of complaints over some things, but we had a very nice letter today from a government agency talking about how great the police department is to work with them. And that's what I like. I wanna see us moving forward and bettering the department and bettering the community's needs. Right now, you know, we deal with a lot of just trying to stop crime. It'd be nice to have another program out there that gives us another angle. 
uh, work in traffic is one thing that can be done with this, you know, up in the residential areas. If you can have a community officer position can be in charge of doing traffic enforcement. Um, so there's a lot of good, a lot of good features to this. And the grants pretty significant. It's over a five year period, but it is a three year grant as the mayor was reading on the thing. We have five years because it takes so long to hire a police officer because the requirements are so tough uh, that it may be a year before we can even fill a position. So that's why it's five years. And then also that had a feature on it that for 12 months after the grant is over, we would have to maintain the officers. That's pretty simple for us because when we had to rebuild this from scratch a couple of years ago, we had to hire a lot of experienced officers that came in from other departments. A lot of those officers are close to retirement. So we're gonna have attrition and we're gonna have you know, officers leaving. We have a few young officers. So it'd be nice to get some more officers on now to get ahead of the curve We've been working on housing initiatives in Wairika to bring more housing. We've got uh, places for the homeless, shelters we're working on, different types of housing for them. The casino is advancing. So within the next year, we're gonna have more population and more calls for service in Wairika. If we wait till then to try and implement some type of program to hire enough officers to keep up with it, it puts us behind the curve and we don't wanna get behind. So I'm trying to get, just stay ahead of the curve. And this gives us a great opportunity to do it. If there's any questions, I'm able to answer questions. I kind of just uh, briefed it. I'm sure you guys have all read it. So. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you, Chief Gilman. Stick around. Um, I'll open a public comment for Chief Gilman. If we can come down the podium, if you want to address the chief, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. For those online, the gentleman was just thanking our um, chief and the police department for some good work being done out there. All right. Any other uh, public comment or question for the chief? Okay. Come on up to the podium, please. <laughs> Glenn White, uh, yeah, grants are great. They're wonderful. But grants go away. And so you're going to hire potentially two new officers. Uh, and then the funding uh, dries up. Uh, have you discussed any ways that you're going to ensure that these officers, once they're here, once they've bought a house, once they've invested in our community, won't be given a layoff notice because that's what happens oftentimes with grants. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. Yes, come on down to the microphone. Keep saying the microphone on the podium. <laughs> Difference, I guess. <laughs> Again, uh, Steve Radford, 409 Evergreen. Again, this all this whole thing comes back to pride of the community. If we had a lot of pride in the community, if we had ambition and, and integrity and morals and values, we would have we would be a bright shining star out there, even though we're a low income uh, what do you want to call it, county, you know, we can't pay our officers or our sheriffs very much money, but we can instill the want to be here through pride of ownership. We have to instill more pride in our community to make people want to come here. If you're aware of Shasta County at all, they're working really hard on taking their county back and making the, the county what they want it to be. The people are speaking up and they're bringing a lot of attention to Shasta County. I don't know if any of you know that, but it, it, it's really out there. It's, it's, it was down CSPAC even. They mentioned Shasta County. And, uh, you know, a lot of what they st have today, yep. we started Sorry, here. Sorry, do you have questions regarding the grant, Mr. Radford? Well, you know, I don't the... like grants. <laughs> okay. They're a problem. So that's your comment. You don't no, like the grant that no, the chief is thing, presenting. <laughs> my point being, my point being that if we had enough pride of ownership in our county and our cities, we wouldn't need grants. That's the way the county, our country was built. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Any other public comment or questions? 
Okay, I will close the to the public and I will come down to our city council members for public comment or questions. Councilman Baker, she's eager. Oh, I'll go of first. I have questions. <laughs> I'm ready for you. Uh, so Chief, is Chief. Chief Gilman, thank you so much um, <laughs> for this presentation. And so I do just have a couple of questions for you. Um, who would be responsible for administering this grant? And I know with grants, there's all kinds of reporting requirements. So whose responsibility will it be to keep up on all of the reporting, all of the administrative um, issues that surround the grant? And I'm sorry, before you answer that question, I'm sorry, I did not give you the opportunity to answer the two gentlemen. Um, I don't know if Mr. Refford had a question or not, but Mr. White did have a question regarding keeping the officers here and I believe investing our community in housing and not giving them a layoff notice in the two or three years that come. So I, I'm sorry. So I will give you the opportunity to ask, uh, answer Mr. White's questions if you would like. Yeah, so in response sorry to Mr. White's that. question, it was a very good <laughs> question. And it was probably one of the last things I said up here with our attrition that we already have, we have retirements planned. These positions are gonna be absorbed into the police department. Even if this doesn't continue after the 12 month window of the grant, there's the attrition is going to be there. You know, there's going to be several openings coming up just because we have an older department of people we brought in. So I hope that answers this question. That's already been planned. For. All right. And the answer. And no, do you remember? Uh, sorry, I apologize. Um, do you remember Councilman Baker's question? Yes. I okay. <laughs> so if you are finished with the question. Yes. Okay. So it's probably going to be a mutual effort between me and the city. I'll be responsible for the grant, but I'll be working with Red and the city for the different departments because some of it is comes through finance. Some of it's going to come from me, um, like if they need stats or if they need to know what programs are implemented as part of their reporting when they need the finance and how much it costs to hire someone, all that. That's going to be part of finance's job. So it'll be a mutual, mutual effort. Thank you. And then um, the, the matching funds, I heard you say that you're hoping to have that through attrition. Is that is that correct? Not necessarily, no. So the matching funds that will come with attrition as the years start to go on. I've got one retirement coming this summer as they go on, but we can't supplant with this grant. So I'm not going to like try and replace positions with it. But the matching funds over a five-year window, you're looking at $50,000 a year, give or take, over the five-year window of it. This would already probably make up for that just in overtime. It's not that much. Really. Okay, thank you. And I know from my previous experience in government that whenever um, employees were hired through grant programs, that it was part of the job acceptance that they understood that this was a grant program, the funding was not guaranteed. Is that something that you are considering when you make offers of employment? Yes, it is. When I was hired, I was hired and told that any layoffs or any budget cuts, my position would be cut. Everyone we've hired since we gets told that, it's pretty standard. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilman Baker. Councilman Davis. When I looked at your information, Mark, um, I, I was under the impression that you were going to uh, ask retired officers and bring them back. Uh, but I, from what I'm hearing here, that's not the case. You were looking for younger folks to fill out the attrition or what? So that's... the grant is to hire new officers or rehire experienced officers. So in the United States right now with a lot of people that were defunding police, stuff like that, all most agencies now in most cities have reverted back and now they've got big pushes to rehire the people they let go. Los Angeles is one of them. Los Angeles is giving waivers to their retirees to bring them back so they have the experience. So that would definitely be part of it. I would like to see personally some younger officers to prepare Wairika for the future. Uh, I think we're going in a great direction the last few years with this council and my department has really made some strides making a difference in Wairika. So I would like to see some younger officers trained up to that standard. So as I retire, people retire, councils change, that the police department continues to go in a positive direction. Uh, a, a lot of times, um, 
I've been involved with grants, not personally, but through a second person that they uh, seek more grants to continue the employment in the same area. Is that part of your plan or are you just going to kind of let that hang at the end? And if we can employ them, we employ them. So that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> the COPS grant program is a rolling grant throughout the United States. So a lot of these comp grants, as soon as this one expires, another one's open. They open them up every year, typically. School resource officers are one of them. You see a lot of the COPS uh, cities run on COPS grants for school resource, and they are a rolling grant. It comes in as a three year window, but then it comes available again. This doesn't say one time anywhere on it. Okay. That's kind of good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Pro Tim McCoy. Um, I want to thank you. I, I, I don't have any questions. I've met with you prior to this. I've met with the city manager to discuss uh, any of it. Um, I do hope that we don't isolate people that are younger and and, 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 and rule out people that are, well, not my age, not my, as old as I am, but you know, in their forties and fifties, those old folks. So I wanna thank you for going after this grant. It is from, from, from doing the title one grants for my district, Wairika Union for, um, I don't know, 12 years. And it wasn't a lot. It was somewhere between three and 5 million each year. Um, this is a very small match to put in for us. And I think you've thought it out well, as far as being able to hang on to those quote unquote younger officers because you have the older officers that want to retire. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pro Tim McCoy. Um, my question was answered today and I was shocked because <laughs> there's a two or three officers that are my age I went to high school with that I consider the young pup up here. But um, Chief Gilman reminded me that they're eligible for retirement in three years, that they've been there since early 20s and not saying they're going to, but he said they're eligible and they're pretty, I consider, I don't consider pretty young, but I was like, gosh, they're looking for retirement. And I'm like, wow. So anyways, um, so we're talking about older officers are really not that old. They just been there for a long time and they started some, a couple of them started with YP, correct? They've been there since their career started. Yeah, we have Two of them. Yeah. There like myself that have been their whole career. Yeah, so it's um, it's hard to believe they're eligible for retirement. But anyway, so you did answer my question that they are going to be um, eligible, but not saying they would, because um, that's what was my question, like, where would they go? And um, uh, the chief did say that there will be some openings in the next couple or three years coming up at the YPD. So thank you for clarifying that with me the other day. Yeah. All right, I have no further questions. Um, okay, so the recommended city council action is the motion to adopt resolution 2318 of the city council of the city of Eureka, state of California, approving the filing of the application for FY23 community oriented policing services, COPS hiring program. Yes. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going. I, I, so I'll I'll go back to. It looks like we have questions. So I'll go back to. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Okay. So I'm going to go back to um, questions. The city council member. I'm sorry. I thought we were finished. Uh, Mr. Davis. <laughs> kind of rolled in after my turn was over. Sorry. Um, we have this financially covered on the matching funds. Is that correct, Mr. Ledbetter? Question for Mr. Ledbetter from Councilman Davis. That will be really determined um, within the budget. So <laughs> hypothetically, you could vote to approve this kind of um, essentially looking leading into the budget that you will eventually hopefully be voting to make cuts or approve. Ultimately, if you move forward approving this and there was a need for a cut, then you would be looking to make cuts elsewhere. So ultimately, we never really truly, it's a fluid budget. Certainly, there's money in the bank to handle a multitude of bad years, hypothetically, where we would be taking from our fund balance that's not in an annual budget. So um but I can't, I can't necessarily answer that question until we have a budget in front of us. We see 
the new negotiations with what that that costs and the ultimate um, kind of projections that we have for revenue versus versus cost. But ultimately, it's roughly fifty thousand um, dollars to the general fund. And uh, ultimately, if we had to make cuts to make it work, I believe that that is um, appropriate, and we would be able to do that. So we wouldn't be getting into the grant with matching funds and not have the funds to match. You're saying we're good to go? We're good because ultimately you could choose, and I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I'm saying that in the past, you know, city councils with any agency can deficit spend if they ultimately uh, wanted to and if they had money available. Uh, in the in their fund balance, which this city does have, you do have a pretty healthy fund balance available that's not built into your annual budget. And so ultimately, you'll be kind of tasked with that decision. Uh, and we have to see kind of where the cards kind of fall when we go into uh, you guys eventually approving a budget. But ultimately, $50,000 over a five year term could we could easily float that if things for some reason came in um, short in this upcoming budget. Thank Does that you, answer Mr. your question? I, okay. I appreciate you allowing me to. All right. You're welcome. All right. So, um, what's good? I'm going to close. Councilman comments. Does anybody else have any questions or concerns before I close public comments? I mean, Negative. Councilman counts. No, I'm good. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, the recommended city action is the motion to adopt resolution 2023 18 of uh, the City Council of the City of Arica, State of California, approving the filing of an application for FY23 Community Oriented. Policing Services COPS Hiring Program. What are the wishes of the council? Uh, pro Tem McCoy. This is uh, pro Mayor Pro Tem McCoy, so moved. I have a motion from Councilman or, uh, Pro Tem McCoy. I'll second that. And I have a second from Councilman Davis. I will do a roll call. Councilman Davis? Aye. Councilman Baker? Aye. Pro Tem McCoy? Aye. And I, Mayor Middleton. All right, motion passes four to zero. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief Gilman, for everything. All right. Item 12 is city manager staff reports. Mr. Ledbetter. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Wairika City Council. This is Jason Ledbetter, the city manager. I will be reaching out to you all individually uh, once we firm up a multitude of different opportunities with the uh, attorney firm contracting. We're going to need to have a special meeting possibly later this week or early next week in order to, to have the review by city council and hopefully uh, signing of some of those contracts. We are currently talking to a water attorney firm, a general firm, and a code enforcement firm. Um, After we do get new counsel, um, we will then work with the city council and that new legal council to schedule the next code of conduct and policy update. We would like that uh, firm to be available to help uh, really lead that process and that document with the city council. And then I just have one last thing. The finance director is working with the YMCA, the city of Montague and what's known as stage the county bus service. Um, to continue the program that was started here a few years back to get children from Wairika uh, through the Y on the county bus over to the Montague pool this summer. Well, we obviously have talked and we still plan by July 1st to have our RFP out on the street for uh, design and engineer of the ringy pool. But until ringy pool is fixed, we will continue to work this program um, with the city of Montague, the YMCA, and the county bus service. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lightbetter. All right, so I will go to um, city council members for 
their reports, statements, and requests. And um, I'll go to Councilman Davis. Any reports, comments to give us? All right. I actually have a couple. You're up. Um, I, I'm a member of the Fire Safe Committee, as you are aware. And we met last, at the end of last month. It was pretty exciting, actually, the uh, Siskiyou County Fire Safe Commission, which is a, a whole countywide deal, uh, received a I would say a large grant of close to $10 million to house harden and work on uh, keeping fire areas around, uh, safety areas around homes and cities. So they're pretty excited about that. And, um, and I, I too joined in, I thought it was pretty great. Um, and that we'll kind of have to wait to see how that's going to shake out for us. But Chief Lemus will be deeply involved into that. Um, the, la the second thing I have is that Mr. Ledbetter, Chief Gilman, and uh, Sergeant Dirksen and I took a stroll down the Greenway. And I, and I must say, and, and that's related to the Fire Safe Council thing. We went and the pictures that Mr. White had were exactly what we saw. Uh, but we also saw some lots and lots of undergrowth, uh, willows that are growing up. And in September and October, August probably too, that makes an unsafe fire area for the city of Wairika. And uh, so we're kind of hoping that we can get in there and do some shrub removal and clean the creek out so that we have a good water source there rather than a, a polluted water source. And it, it looks like we might be able to do that. And I know Mr. Ledbetter probably would report on that better than I, because he's more involved in the, that part of it. But I was really pretty excited about that trip down Greenway. I've never been on it. Um, there's places where my wife's staff walks and there are five or six encampments back there, so they don't walk. Um, and, and the city has got a program going to help move them along. Don't exactly know how that's going to work out, but I'm sure it'll be just fine. So that's what I have to say. All right. Thank you, Councilman Davis. So, Councilman Baker. Um, thank you, um, Mayor Middleton. Um, I have uh, a report to make and then a couple of requests for the consideration of uh, future agenda items. Um, first of all, um, I have been appointed to C2C and uh, all of our meetings have been canceled due to weather. So <laughs> hopefully next month we will be able to meet. Um, I did attend the LAFCO meeting um, as the city's representative on March 14th. And uh, I, at one time in my life, was actually the clerk for LAFCO, and <laughs> I got quite a kick out of sitting on the other side of the room. So that was that was kind of fun. Um, and uh, LAFCO is going to be very busy in the next couple of years. They've got a lot of decisions that they'll be making. So that's pretty exciting. Um, let me see. Uh, I would just like to say uh, to Chief Gilman, since he's in the room, I did actually receive a phone call today from a citizen of Wairika who is very happy with the increased police patrols in her neighborhood. So good job with that. And I, I do have a couple of uh, requests. Um, first of all, um, I really would like to see the city council put a process in place for taking positions on legislation. I, I know I'm getting a lot of action alerts from the League of California Cities um, about um, pending legislation that could really have an effect 
on um, our city. And in talking with Mr. Ledbetter, I don't believe that we have an official process in place to take positions on that legislation. And I would like to see um, something put into place. So that's one request that I have. Um, another request is that um, the um, communications ad hoc committee, which the mayor and I are members of, if we could set a meeting up, our first meeting in the next couple of weeks, I would appreciate that. Sure. I think we need to get going on, yes. on a lot of those issues. And then um, finally, um, a couple of weeks ago, I was invited to uh, volunteer appreciation recognition for the um, Siskiyou Community Food Bank. And I had the pleasure of volunteering for that organization last summer um, during the fires and after the fires. And I was so impressed with everything that that organization has done and the different ways that they touch the community. And so I would really like to invite them to just come um, at the beginning of the meeting and make a presentation, tell us about what they're doing. They recently received a grant from T-Mobile um, uh, for some different um, help with the community. So those are, that's my report and my requests. Thank you, Councilman Baker. So the email from T-Mobile was legit. It looked like a, a weird scam talking about they received a grant, but it was like weird. So we didn't know if it was real or not. So it probably was real. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was kind of strange. All right, Pro Tem um, McCoy. Um, I, I wanted to remind everybody that April 12th is our Lola meeting in Weed. So if you haven't made your um, um, reservations, you might want to check with um, city, uh, assistant city manager, um, oh. You guys are all reserved for Around that. Reserve, okay. Um, COC would normally meet April 5th. That's tomorrow. Uh, it has been moved because Dr. Collard and um, Madeline and um, Dwayne, the top three that run the meetings, none of them are here. So we just moved that to April 17th, just so you know. So it's changed from April 5th to April 17th. Um, I want to thank Mr. Davis for taking a stroll out there and, and uh, in the under the Caltrans Bridge of the Creek Cleanup, I know that I have done it many times. Uh, I've done it with you, I've done it with uh, Dwayne, and we've done it with other members of the COC. And I know that you, uh, I know I've been, I've been giving Jason a hard time about also making sure that we get the Caltrans cleanup area cleaned up uh, if you haven't noticed down near minor street it's really bad if we had a flood in the winter time it would just back up and it's going to cover everything down there and then also i know jason has been working for the last two or three months contacting caltrans in regards to getting that area cleaned up under the bridge which really i don't think belongs to us it belongs to the graffiti ring belongs to them so we can't necessarily go in and do anything and then when we're talking about cleaning up down there, does that mean we haven't been able to clean up for six years because we haven't had our 1600 permit? We couldn't even clean up during the fire because California Department of Fish and Wildlife said it wasn't an emergency if people's homes burned. So is it, do we have our 1600 permit yet so we can start cleaning up there or are we still just awaiting it? We're still awaiting it. We do have a lot of good news on that front. We did get re receive word from CDFW that um, everything was a go. And so now there's a 60 day period where we wait to get our actual uh, permit, our 1600, our routine maintenance agreement. So we can enter into the creek, uh, all, all different creeks around town. And ultimately you'll notice, I notice it all the time because I drive past Gold Street all the time. And so <laughs> Last year, we were notified finally that we were able to get to top of embankment. And so that's why there was a lot of weed whacking done. But ultimately, we want to get down into um, the creek bed itself. And we want to mitigate fire danger, uh, similar to the Alme Almeida fire. So we do anticipate in less than 60 days that we'll be able to do that. Thank you very much. And I want to thank Retta and you and Janae Scruggs for working on that very hard. I don't think people understand that we do not have control over uh, all of our land within, this, within the city. We have to go through other agencies to be able to do things on that land, which is, is difficult for us. But I want to thank the three of you again for doing that. And um, I'm going to yield 
to the mayor. Thank you, Pro Tim McCoy. I don't know if I have anything <laughs> really. <laughs> Seems like it's been busy. Um, I'm ready for spring and summer. I think most of us are, you know, we'll take when we get, but I know we've had a good winter. Um, one thing I'm gonna start advocating for <laughs> up here is, uh, uh, I'm sure Chief will agree with me, as I've just seen an overload of dogs being captured around town and not claimed to be put up for adoption. So. I'm gonna feel like Bob Barker up here at the end of the segment saying, you know, for everybody to get their pets spayed and neutered and get them shipped because it's they've been overcrowded down at the um, the um, city pound and getting them adopted. But they do a great job of getting the dogs adopted. Up. Um, I know the uh, the kennel um, person. Um, I don't know what technician. What's what's her name? Catherine, Catherine, um, Chief spoke really highly of her getting the dogs adopted and said she does a fantastic job. And so, um, but it breaks my heart, you know, to see as many pets that have been picked up off the street. So just a reminder of our citizens and, um, you know, please check the website if their dog goes missing and also have their, their pets um, spayed and neutered and also chipped because they can get home. But it's been sad that um, they've been overran lately with a lot of doggies so um so we definitely want our citizens to you know keep their dogs if they can so to make sure they um look there um like i said everybody's been busy um and um, i don't think i have anything else to report and um thank you everybody for coming this evening and um, i will adjourn thank you so much Oh, oh, this is a record. Yep, since I've been here two and a half years.